My name is Justin Jeffers, and I am a landscape architect. Now, with a quick show of hands, how many people know what a landscape architect actually is? Not many people, as I expected. When I tell people I'm a landscape architect, they usually think, oh, he's just a guy that deals with plants or cuts lawns. And it's actually so much more than that. Um, after years of study, I would come to realize, to me, this is one of the most important professions that there is out there. Like Lanny said, there's a lot of creative ways to think of space and design. And we, sorry, we need people to design these type spaces. For me, I, there was a re reoccurring theme as I studied landscape architecture. And that was rethinking, reclaiming, and repurposing. Rethinking the spaces that we use. Something as simple as a sidewalk. Like Lanny showed, it could be a rain garden and be able to let the water that usually would be settling in the road and now setting traffic, or maybe you can't walk on the sidewalk. It now disperses the water into the ground naturally. And I'll just show you some examples quickly. Well, New York City. Now this is one of the biggest and most recognized parks in the world started to see the impact that landscapes could have. This little space, well not little space, not little at all, this receives approximately 35 million visitors annually. It's a space that's well used, it welcomes people of all walks of life, rich, poor, black, white, young, old, and it has a host of activities that people can do. I mean, you even have cricketers in Central Park doing their thing, you know. Then there's another one, Copacabana Promenade in Brazil. This has become one of the world's famous beaches, one of the most famous beaches. And instead of having just the standard rigid um, concrete um, sidewalk, the designer Roberto Barramax used this wave pattern and it's made it one of the most recognizable beaches in the world also. So here's one of my early designs in Baltimore where it was a abandoned old water tower and it was in the middle of a historic neighborhood and they wanted to know what they could do with this eyesore because nobody was doing anything with it and it had become run down. For me, it became an excellent opportunity to create a park there. And the idea I had behind it was art framing history. As you can see, the um, water tower in the center and the landscape would become the art around it. And this is what it became as further designed. Um, another example was a small lawn area in front of a charter school in front of a small charter school. Um, and they wanted to make use of this space. It was a space that was hardly being used. So they wanted us to rethink it and how could they remake it a little oasis. And this is the design I ended up coming up with. So you can see it here in 3D. There you go. So it became a place where the students could come and hang out or the teachers could come and have an outdoor class also and just sit down. But then that theme kept reoccurring. I realized that I was rethinking these spaces that people weren't really using and making use of them, reclaiming them, and repurposing them. I started to realize that landscape architecture was so much more than just creating a pretty space. It became an opportunity to design for both humans and nature. Come up with design solutions that could help environmental issues that we're facing today and create both iconic and new landscapes. Same um, rain garden idea that Lanny was talking about earlier. We could beautify the sidewalks by simply putting a rain garden and also solve a problem. Same green roof idea. The top is Chaha Chicago City Hall. You can put these green roofs on top of anything and they, one, reduce the energy cost of cooling buildings 
They create a peaceful and retreat for people and animals, so people can now use their rooftop spaces. They absorb storm water, so a lot of that water runoff that would have been on the ground now is being absorbed by the green. And it gives us a chance to make use of space that we wouldn't have been using before, as we could see here in New York, where there's, it was a plain roof before, nobody's going up there to do anything. And they turned it into a garden. Why couldn't one of these be on top super center, where they start producing some of their own fruits and vegetables? You could incorporate solar panels with it. It allows you to recycle, you can see this pet bottle wall garden that we have here. Becoming creative with the wall space that we often just walk past. But food becomes a serious issue. It's a serious issue that we're facing today. This is the food for, this was an article taken from the Nation newspaper talking about Barrier's food import bill that Omar was talking about earlier. $26 million in fruit, really? Uh, $23 million in fresh vegetables? We can start producing more of our own fruits. I'm not saying that we're going to eliminate this food import bill. <laughs> but there are many opportunities around us to start growing our own food. We need to get back to growing our own food. And here are a few designs that I kind of just started up with. It, a lot of people don't want to grow their own food. Maybe they don't have the green thumbs, but a lot of them it's ugly. They don't want just rows of garden. I mean rows of planted stuff. So you can make it a garden area. You can have a nice patio where you can hang out at. And this was a vacant lot next to somebody's house that they just mow every now and then just to keep the neighbors happy. <laughs> but we can make this a useful space. As you can see the garden down below, I mean in the picture. It's colorful, it's bright. It isn't just long rows of planted vegetables. Another one was my idea of a sustainable market. And the idea was born out of planting a seed in a neighborhood where this would implement a lot of the ideas that I'm talking about. Growing gardens on top of the roofs, green roofs, solar panels to reduce the energy use. And this is just giving you a 3D idea of what that space could be. And the final one is just the small space. This is my patio on top of my roof. Right now the space is used for nothing. But with a few planter beds, creatively placed. It could be a beautiful space to come and still hang out in. It's not just about growing things. It's about creating spaces that people want to be in, creating an experience for people. It's about community. It's about so much more than just growing things, but connecting with each other. So a lot of these ideas, land, edible landscapes, eco-villages, intentional communities, planting up vacant lots, community gardens, roof gardens, vertical gardens, are just having little planters in several different spaces. Give us the opportunity to grow our own food. And like I said, it won't get rid of the import bill, but it, rapidly, it, it will reduce it greatly. And with that, I'd just like to say, Landscape architecture has taught me a lot of important things. We need to rethink our spaces, especially in these times where space is limited or we have a lot of abandoned lots or this sort of thing going on. We need to bring use to that space, repurpose that space. And on that note, thank you very much. <laughs>